God is good. You know, the last time Christmas fell on Sunday was 2016. That was the year that we moved to here, the gathering exactly six years ago. Can you hear me? Is it coming out? It doesn't sound like it's coming out. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I, you know, I, I, was, I went away for about eight days last week. Uh, to, I felt God wanting me to take time to uh, come up and spend time with him and fast and pray. And I did that. I came back on Tuesday. And it was a really uh, beautiful time. God and God gave, gave me many thoughts and many ideas, many words and many promises. I'm grateful. I'm going to share that at the end. But pray for uh, some of us today. What I want to do today uh, on Christmas Day, uh, this service, I want to share, tell a story and share a simple gospel in light of the story. The title of the message is The Gift. The Gift. The text is from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 20, and, and John chapter 3, verse 16. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you so much for your grace, your love for us, your love manifest to us, to the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you, God. Father, I ask that right now that you'll use me, that you'll grant your word, and you'll let your word come alive in our midst. You will speak to us. You'll meet us here. We want to see your face. You want to worship and adore you and honor and give you glory. Our God and our King. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today is Christmas. Not me, mas. It's not about me. Not even about family. I know people say Christmas is all about family. It is not. It is Christ. Must this day is we are really celebrating Christ, what He has done for us, who He is. I want to tell a story, a story that which we all know well, and I want to read Luke chapter two, verse one through twenty, which is the Christmas story. And I want to read as I read. I may add few things here and there. I will not take away anything. Just let's look at it a little bit. I'm reading from ESV. You don't have to stand. Just let's look at this. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. Caesar Augustus, which was emperor of Rome, ordered everyone in the empire to be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And everyone went to be registered to their own hometowns, including Joseph from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, the city of David, because he was descendant and lineage of David, which the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because of the house and lineage of David, to be registered, along with Mary, who was engaged to him, who was pregnant. She was quite full-blown pregnant with a child. Skip the verse here. Let me find my verses. And, and, and while were there, they were there, the time came along for her to give birth. Time is ready to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And wrapped in, in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Which there, because there was no room, no space in the hospital or in or that place. Beth Bethlehem was a very tiny little town. They sent only about two, three hundred people in the whole town. Very small town. They wouldn't have had a lot of inns either. Maybe one or two at most. And there was no place there for Mary to have a baby. That's the night when Jesus was born. The baby was born. In verse 8, in the same region, there were was, there was shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Hopefully it was not as cold as last couple of days. 
But they were out in the field watching sheep. And an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. You know, that they were scared, filled with fear. An angel said to them, Fear not, do not fear. For behold, I'm bringing you a good news of great joy that will be for all people, for everyone. For because unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, one who saves, who is Messiah the Christ, the Lord. Angel shows up and tells the shepherds about the good news that was coming. And in verse 12 it says, and this will be the sign. This is how you will know. This is what I'm telling you is truth. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger. This is a sign. That this is the, how you know that what we are telling you is true. And this is what God is saying. That this good news I'm tell, we are telling you is true. This is a sign. You'll find a baby born that night. There could have been other babies born that night. But and the baby will be wrapped, wrapped in uh, swaddling clothes. But laid in a manger. Which baby would be laid in a manger that night? And suddenly there was angel, a multitude of angels sh showed, shown up and, and begin to sing and praise God, saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to peace among those whom he is pleased. Glory to God in the highest, peace to those whom God has favor upon. And when the angel went away from them in back to heaven, the shepherds told one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So let's go and see, check it out, see what happened in Bethlehem. We do not know how far they were from Bethlehem, but they were in the region. They came running in verse 16, and they went with haste, found Mary and Joseph. And the baby lying in a manger. Now when you think about it, they came back, I don't know how many maybe half a dozen or so, they came back and they are searching the town, but it's a small town anyway. In, and so, you know, and it, a manger, not that many places with a manger. So they would look for that and they found a place with Mary and Joseph, man and a woman, and a baby laid in a manger. I, I don't know if you thought about it. Manger is a feeding trough for animals. So they have nowhere to put the baby, apparently. So they cleaned up and they, and they you know, cleared up the things on the trough and they laid the baby in perfect place. I mean, a per nice place in it, but dirty in, in, in it. So and that night, that's, that's what they found. When they saw it, they told everybody what they, what they heard the angel told them concerning this child that a uh, savior is born, the Messiah, the Lord, the good news, which will be for all people. For the angel came and glorifying God and told them about it. Verse 18, and, and everybody who are there, Mary and Joseph, maybe some other people, heard, heard it. They were all wondering at what the shepherds told them. And they were thinking, it was really, really, amazed and probably wondering is what's going on. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her, in her heart. This is how we get this record. How do, you, how do you know this happened? Because Mary remembered and treasured it, maybe even, you know, and maybe had a record of it, and later down told Luke, the writer of this gospel, and what happened? And the shepherds returned. The shepherds, after all this happened, they returned back glorifying and praising God for all they have heard and seen as it had been told them. This is what happened the night when the baby Jesus was born. You say, where is the Magi? Not here yet. 
The story that is written in the Gospel of Matthew probably happens at least a few days later, at least a few days later, because when they come, the baby and the child is in the house, not in the not in the barn, not in the manger, not in the manger, in the house. Maybe at least a few days down the line, or maybe even longer. So not here, but first night when the night, and I don't you know, I don't know, you know, my mind run the did was a baby born that was it? We, you know, we celebrate Christmas Eve and everything else. Was it 24th e e e evening or 25th early in the morning or 25th evening was the baby born? I like to think, you know, I like, you know, it's, I, you know, it's, it's arbitrary that we, you know, we chose. But anyway, when Jesus was born as a human being, a baby, you know, I, you know I must have born it sometimes. Maybe afternoon she began to have a contraction, you know, and by the evening and maybe 9 p.m. she had a baby. That means Christmas would be, she was, he was born on Christmas evening, not early in the morning. Anyway, we'll get that. This is a story we have heard often. This is a story about Christmas. If you think about it, it doesn't sound, it's, it's not as exciting as you think it is. When Jesus was born, in a, born and laid in a manger, it's a really pitiful picture. This poor couple uh, traveling from Nazareth came to uh, uh, Bethlehem to register for the uh, registration that was required to do, and they had no place, to, no room. They ended up staying in a barn with animals and baby sheep gave birth. Nobody is there. Not only that, now, when, when this baby was Jesus was born, who does angel, who does God tell and notify the birth of Jesus? Not a rich man, not a king, but a, shep a few shepherds in the field nearby. Not even rabbis, not even scholars, not even theologians, just simple shepherds out in the field who are considered lowly of lowliest, who are considered unclean even to go to temple. They are not allowed to go into the temple. Their, their testimonies are not counted because they say they are unreliable people. To them, the God sent angels to declare, my son is born. That's a Christmas story. Now, but I want to tell you what real story is about. I want to tell a story now, a little more, and I call it the Father's Gift. The, fail, the, the most famous verse, almost everybody knows, many people memorize, thousands and thousands of people memorize is John 3, 6, and everybody knows by heart. But what I want to do next 15 minutes, 10 minutes, is talk about John 3, 16. Because I believe John 3, 16 is a summary a summary of the Christmas story. I believe John 3, 16 is a summary of the Christmas story. Christmas story was, there was that there was a decree went out to be registered and Mary and Joseph comes to, goes to Bethlehem and the city of David and, and to be registered and while there, their baby was born. Look, John 3, 16, it says in ESV, for God so love the word that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal or everlasting life. Let me read it from the tasty version. Message, MSG version, okay, message version. This is how much God loved the world. This is, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why. So that no one need to be destroyed by believing in him. Anyone can have whole and lasting life. I know you know this first now. I want to just break it down a little bit, a phrase by phrase, look at it a little bit. It's, first of all, I want you to look at because God so loved the world. Somebody said, if a man or guy tells a girl, I love you, it may mean nothing. But he says, I so love you. That is something. You, you, you see, I like, you know, I love cats. I love dogs. I love tomatoes. I, I do. I do love tomatoes. And you know, and I love you. 
may mean not much. But it, this passage said, because God so loved you. That is the first thing. If I, want you to, I want you to think about to go back to Christmas story. It began with, they say, in that time, Caesar Augustus, the emperor of the greatest empire at the time, made a decree so that everybody needs to register. You said, okay, something is going on in the back. God was orchestrating all this thing. God was moving the hearts of the kings and all over the world, even the Caesar Augustus, to decree. So that just as he has promised, just as a prophesy that the baby, the son that he's giving, the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. God is working in the back. God so loved the world. He planned everything. I thought about this. What is a good gift? What is the best gift? What are some qualities of a good gift? One of them has to be, one of the things has to be, good gift has to be intentional. It's not accidental. It's something you planned it, you thought about it, a lot of care went into it. This is, isn't this why a guy wants to pop a question, he prepares all the details. One of my favorite Korean drama, you know, that, what, what was it? Uh, Secretary Kim, what is that? What's wrong with Secretary Kim? So, you know, you remember when he proposes, right? He prepares, you know, and, and, and all that, you know, and, and all the, what is it, uh, writing boards, things, and with the caramel and whatnot, when she, when she comes in, he's playing on a piano in the back, there's a water coming down on the wall and everything, singing. All the way to prepare, to, to say, I love you. Good gift, something in, intentional and prepared. And also good gift is something that it is beneficial for the person. You may prepare something, but if I don't, if, I, if the receiver, I don't care, I don't want it, I don't, I don't like it, what's the point? It's something that benefits the person. Good gift is thoughtful, and also you don't, you don't worry about how much it costs. I, I want to show my wife I love her, but I only have five, I, 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 I'm not going to spend more than five bucks. You cheapskate. <laughs> anyway, I'm not a gift, gift kind of person. I don't buy gifts. On Christmas Day, my wife buys gifts in the name of me and my wife together. She always say, mom and dad is giving you this. I have not, not, nothing to do with it. She did every, she prepared, she bought everything. This is the first actually I got some gifts. Some gifts, not good, cheap gifts, but something I thought about and thought about anyway. So, gift. Yeah, it's a God so I mean, the love the world. And, and, and somebody said, somebody said, you can always give without loving. But you cannot, you can never love without giving. Because God so loved the world. Second, he gave. God so loved the world. He planned everything. He gave. He gave. What? Not only blessing, but he gave. His one and only son. He gave his son, Jesus Christ. Why? So that God, God, through Jesus, God will show us who he is like. To communicate to us about God. If you want to communicate to cow, you become a cow. If you want to talk to pigs, come and get pigs, you become a pig. You, God, became a human being so that he can communicate with us and show us our Father. Something that I thought about, you know, and I know I've heard it from so many places. But one, of the, one of the main things Jesus, our Lord Jesus, came to show was what it, what, what it means that God is a Father. You can only show God is a Father by showing a relationship. He has to come as a son so that your relationship, his relationship with God the Father, through it he'll show us that God is a Father. Doesn't make sense. You cannot show God, God is a Father without showing the relationship. Jesus Christ came as a son to show us our God is a Father, how, what kind of Father he is. When you see he, the relationship, you see he is a good Father. So God gave the gift of God. Somebody said, 
if you know, you know, I don't know if you're somebody, right? Some, some people, if you want to do it right, you have to do it. What? If you want to do it right, you want to do it yourself. Right? People say, well, you wanna, if you don't do it right, you want to do it yourself. Right? Me, if, if I want to do it right, I, I, I need to call Mr. Ho. If I need to do it, I need to call Steve. Not me. You know, you know, but anyways, there's a saying, if you want to do it right, you need to do it yourself. God, wanted, because you want to do it right, he came by himself. He came as himself to do it right. He gave. Right? And, that, and, and that's the gift. Sacrificial gift. You know, and I th think about this. This year, I have I, I, I one of the most amazing story ever. I can tell anywhere I go. Have a little, little, you know, as I'm a preacher, I'm a, I'm a pastor, so I always try to write down some stories I can tell somewhere. I have wrote a, some wonderful story in our church this year, so I can tell people about giving. You know about this. One of our, God, one of our people in our church decided to give to a stranger one of his kids so that that person can live. How amazing is that? Not a family member, not somebody you care about, but um, some stranger. He gave one of his kidneys to save the guy who is dying without the kidney transplant. Think about that. How great a gift can it be? And God gave his one and only son so that we may be saved. God gave us a gift. He thought of, he planned it from a long time ago. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, it says, He um, chosen us before the foundation of the world and he present, predestined us to adoption through Jesus Christ himself. And in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, God thought of us from eternity, planned it. His plan was to give his son, Jesus Christ. He planned it out. He worked it out. And then he that's what he has done, gave Jesus for our sake because we needed him. Without him, we will not be saved. Third thing, the gospel that is, comes out of God, John three sixteen is that God gave so that Whosoever believes in him, whosoever believes in him, is an invitation, is a proposal. Whosoever, no matter who you are, if you believe in what God has done for you, let me start it to backtrack a little bit. When, when the angel came and told the shepherds on the field and said, hey, do not fear, I bring you good news of great joy, which is for all people. You know what it says? For unto you tonight in the seed of David, a, a, a child is born who is your Savior. One who saved. Savior is born. This is what Jesus is born to, to, to be a Savior because we need a Savior. Without him, we will all perish. He is a Messiah, the promise, the promise, uh, the Lord and King from our God and Lord that he, that he is. The third thing it says, God, so God gave so that whosoever believes in him, who is for whosoever, everyone and anyone who will believe and trust in Jesus for what he has done, what God has done, how he gave his son, Jesus Christ to us. Whosoever believes in him, doesn't matter if you're old or young, doesn't matter if you are short or tall, doesn't matter if you're skinny and like me, or a little larger, doesn't matter if you are smart or, or not, whosoever, doesn't matter what background, what economic status you are, doesn't matter what, what, what you did, what you didn't do, all that, whosoever, whosoever, that means you and me. Your name is in it, my name is in it. Whosoever believes in him, trusts in him. You know, um, and, and so, here, whoever believes, you will trust, accept him. You know, when somebody gives you a gift, you have to receive it, right? And, and uh, lately, you know, when I came back from my, uh, a week away, I saw this little notice from UPS, whatever. And it was, was it UPS? Oh, no, we missed you, little notice. 
and say, you know, we will try again. There's another one that came. We missed you again. And, and then if you do not claim it by this day, it will go back. You know, have you gotten some of those? When you receive, when, when gift come, unless you receive it, it's not yours, isn't it? I'm not much of a gift giving person. I, I felt like giving something today. I don't know how many uh, Starbucks lovers that love Starbucks coffee. Right? I don't know how, I don't know how many of you are good. Uh, you know, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm not a Starbucks person. I'm a Dunkin' Donuts guy. <laughs> I like Dunkin' Donuts sweet coffee, okay? I don't need an expensive burnt coffee. <laughs> and with which you try to, try to hide the burnt coffee taste by putting a lot of syrups and whatever it might be. But some of you may be a Starbucks person. I would like to give this kind of gift, kind of a gift to somebody. Unless you receive it, unless you receive it from me, it's not yours. I can say I'll give it to you. Unless you receive it, it's not yours. And whosoever believes, receives. Whoever, whosoever believes, receives, uh, re believes, they will not perish but have eternal life. They will have coffee for at least three, four times. <laughs> Whosoever. 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 She didn't, she didn't. God's soul, because of his love for us, because he knows what is best for us. If there was any other way God could save us without Jesus coming on earth and dying on the cross, he could have done that. But because this is the only way, he said, he sent his one and only son. And when he comes, he says, whosoever believes, receives him and trusts in him. What is God's promise? They shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is not just you live forever when you die. Everlasting life is life that you start living right now with God, eternal life with God right now, that will continue on because you have eternal life in Christ. Even from now, it will continue on. Even when you die physically, it will continue on the eternity. Eternal life. That's the promise of God. As simple as that. For me, that's what Christmas story is about. God orchestrated all this thing just as he promised to give his son, Jesus Christ. To be born as he said he would be as a Messiah, born in the line of David. He was born in Bethlehem as God has promised through a virgin. It's a miracle. A woman who never, never known a man. Not, not, not without in virtue any of those, she had a baby. And that baby is Jesus. And, and, and the way God told everybody about how the baby is Messiah and the Savior, even going through the, the uh, telling the shepherds, tells you it is for everyone. If that uh, uh, angel announcement went to King Herod and the rich people, you would think it's for those people who are up here who knows all those things. If you only went to, if you went to theologian, or if you may think that you need to be smart to understand these things, receive no. Came to the laws of laws, anyone can come. And when they came, you know, there were responses, right? People wondered what happened, and the, and, and the shepherds went back excited and glorifying God. And Mary treasured it, remembered it, pondered about it thought about it. And in the, we, 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 are not, we don't have it in this story, but a few days later, sometime later, Magi, these wise people, scholars from Far East, traveled long distance, planned, and came all the way to see this baby born, and comes and worship him, bringing gifts. Isn't it? This is the story of Christmas. Look at this pic that I, I love this pic that I found. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. That's the baby laid on a manger. This is a sign, Jesus, Bible says, 
that you know this is a true, this is what, this is what God has promised. A baby will be laid in a manger. That is Jesus Christ. Therefore, on Christmas, we sing songs like, Oh, come, holy faithful, joyful and triumphant. Every one of those carols, songs, those hymns, there's a line that I really love. The line I love in that, that song is, Come, come and behold him. I, that's the line for me. Come and behold him. Born the king of angels. Come let us adore. Oh, what about this hymn? This one you know too. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let it be. Receive a king, let it be a prepaying room. And heaven and nature sing. The line that I love is the line that says, let every heart prepare him room. Hello, Gabby. Okay. Is your heart prepared? Is there room in your heart? On the day, on the day when the baby was born, there was a room at the end, right? What about you on this Christmas day? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for Jesus? Is there room in your heart for the Savior who came to save the world, which is you and me? Oh, the song that we sang, I love this. I love the chorus of the song. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voice says, oh, night divine. When Christ was born, oh night, oh holy night, oh night divine. I love the line. Fall on your knees. That's what Christmas is about. I'm so grateful that on this Christmas day we can come. Celebrate Christmas. Listen, Christmas is not about family. It's about heavenly family. Christmas is about Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. That he loves you and me. He came to save us. He, he came to give us life and life abundant. That's what Christmas is. It's a day. To give gifts. Receive his gift for us. We want to give gift to him. Let me end with this story, right? Now, I, for a number of you, I remember there was a number of I don't know how long ago, you know, it was. Yeah, I remember some of our little kids were having Christ, or the birthday party. In the end, they were singing birthday song. And the girl, I think it was, a, it was a girl's birthday, I think, she was ready to blow the candle and they're singing the Christmas and the happy birthday and then at the end, when ready to blow, a boy comes in and blows the candle. And she was so sad and crying. I don't know who that was. Was it Lee? Who was the boy who blew the... <laughs> was, it, was it Ian? Ian, that was you. It was a little girl, I think Lydia's birthday party, there were all the, all the kids all around, they're singing, happy birthday to you, and then she's ready to blow, and then he comes in, <laughs> blow the candle, and she's like, and she's upset. Whose birthday is it? Who is blowing out the candle here? Think about it. I love the prayer that uh, uh, Jen, uh, Jen, Mary's mom, Jen, prayed. What can I bring as a gift? What gift are you bringing to Jesus on his, as you celebrate his birthday? As, we, as you celebrate how God loves us.
has shed his blood for us. God is good. Let's, 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 uh, let's just read, let's, let's just recite the verse together. Remember the verse. John, how many of you guys know John 3.16? How many of you John 3.16? Anybody? Okay. Let, let's read together, okay? So can anybody can anybody do it? Know the know the John 3.16? You too? You know, you know too? Okay. You come on. You want to go first? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Give him. What about you? Janice and the son, oh my goodness. All right, God is good. Let's, let's, let's read that together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, we love you, we honor you, we give you glory. We thank you for loving us. Father, we thank you for giving your son, Jesus, to be our Savior. We thank you, Father, for your love for us. On this Christmas day, we give you thanks for your grace. All that you have done for us, we love you, God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen, amen. All right, now Hope Kids, our Hope Kids and Jam has uh, prepared uh, some presentation today, and, uh, and they call it Christmas Celebration for Hope Kids and Jam. The, at this time, um, uh, Amy, the leader of Hope Kids, will come out and... All right, friends, come, our Hope Kids and Jam friends, come, let's go around the steps right here. All right. Right here, all the way up in the middle of the stage, the most favorite spot. We wanted to take this time to celebrate the birthday of our Jesus, our Savior, and we're going to have a little song, and we have a couple of friends who's going to read verses for us. All right, everybody, on, you can be on the steps. All right, this, all right, if you need to sit, that's fine. You can sit. The smaller kids, you can sit. The younger friends. All right. All right. Are you ready? Okay. Next slides. And we're going to play the, the, the song.
All right. All right. Thank you. Now I have a couple of friends. We have Willard. Where's Willard? All right. Willard will be reading our first Christmas verse. Come, Willard. Right here. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9 to 6. All right. Thank you, Willard. And our second friend, Naomi. All right. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I will bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to he is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke 2, verse 10 and 11. Take it, take it. Ava, Ava. And then lastly, we all wanted to wish a happy birthday to... Happy birthday to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. Thank you, friends. That concludes our, our little presentation. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll end the service with a uh, uh, final praise together. Before we do, um, I just want to let you know, um, while I was uh, away uh, in prayer, God actually gave me a promise. And uh, today, it's not, you know, it's not sort of a, a normal Christmas thing that we do, but uh, the, the word God gave me was from Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And it says, and you will go forth and skip about like calves out of the stall. I believe that was the promise God has given. And one of the promises God has given, I felt uh, 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 the unctions. I, be, I felt uh, God uh, called to pray for some people today, especially in this Christmas Sunday. Pray for some people for healing today. And especially, I believe this is for some people. And, you know, and after the uh, final praise we will do, after benediction, if you need any prayers, I want to invite you to come. We want to pray for you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down before the king, before God who became a man came as a human being to be our savior to give his life as a ransom for many we come and we worship you God we honor you God what can we give how can we honor you how, what, can, what kind of gift can we bring oh we bring ourselves to you we say we are yours use us for your glory and honor take us God as we are for your glory for your honor we love you God we give you thanks in this Christmas day. We give you, we worship you. Now the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God the Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit of God be upon all who are gathered on this Christmas day, celebrating the birth of our King and our Savior. And be upon Hope Church, and all who call upon the name of Jesus, from now until forever and ever. Amen. 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 I want to invite anyone and everyone who wants to give their hearts to him, who want to bring yourself, and I want to pray for those in need of healing and touch even now.